Ice Locked here with Nocturne Gaming, back with more Legends of Eidolon, and today we're taking a look at a fishing sampling guide. For fishing, there are six stats that you need to pay attention to to get the most out of your fishing sampling. The first of these is fishing efficiency, and this is the base stat that you need to catch any fish, and also increase your multiplier to get more from your multi-fish chance. The second is going to be your average catch time, which is a fancy way of saying the fishing speed. Fishing speed increases how often you put out your line, and it's just going to increase your overall AFK gains. The main difference between this and the World 1 skills is that there's no cap on your fishing speed, so the more you can get, the better off you are. The third stat is going to be your multi-fish chance. Multi-fish chance is another multiplier that, so that you get more fish for every time you put out your line, and this does cap at 300%. It is mandatory to have the sploosh sploosh bubble equipped as this is going to increase your multiplier on multi-fish from 100% to 300%, so you'll be able to get more of the stat. The fourth stat is going to be your printer sampling rate, and this is capped at 90%. You can see this in the construction tab, and basically the more sampling rate you have, the more of your AFK gains you're actually going to get from your um, sampling. The fifth stat is going to be your AFK gain rate. We want AFK gain rate to be as high as we possibly can as this is basically a flat multiplier on all of your other stats and that's going to help make your samples a lot higher. The sixth, the sixth stat is more unique to fishing and that is going to be the depth. There are four different colors and we want to multiply that color for the fish that we're specifically trying to catch. So we're going to be switching around our lures and lines to get the optimal depth, speed, and uh, catch rates on the specific fish that we're trying to sample before we move on to the next fish. So there's a few tricks that we'll get to that at the end of the guide when we actually start sampling. But before that, there's a lot of pieces of the puzzle. So let's get started with that. The first piece of the puzzle is going to be which pieces of gear to equip to get the most fishing efficiency and other stats that you need. Now, for me, starting with my helmet, the best in slot is going to be the Magma Core headdress. You could potentially use the funny hat, but you need to check for yourself if this is going to be a little bit better or not. Where I'm currently at, it's about the same, so I'm not really getting a whole lot of difference. Moving on to the chest piece, you can use the, um, the studded hide, which gives you the 10% fishing efficiency, or you can use the Magma Core chest, depending on which is better for you. For me, this is about, about a billion difference using the two uh, fishing pieces versus the two dreadlow pieces. So uh, using these two pieces, I definitely want to stay with this, these two fishing as I am getting more overall However, depending on your stats, this may not be the case and magma may be better for you. For pretty much everybody, the deep sea galoshers are going to be your best in slot as that 35% efficiency outweighs anything that your 4% all stats and base strength can give you. Moving on to the pendant slot, this one is a little bit more tricky. The best in slot for most people is going to be the Divine Scarf. This character is my cooking character, so he's a little under leveled right now. But if I can use this, this 25% AFK gain rate should be best in slot. And then if you can't use that, then Persephone's Bouquet is going to be your second best in slot. This is the case for everything except for whenever you're trying to get a specific uh, like the krakens that need the purple depth the skullfish pendant is actually slightly better than the persephone's bouquet for the purple depth so bloaches and krakens you do want to have the skullfish pendant hanging around Moving on to our rings, we have the serrated Rex rings, and these are the 8% skill efficiency. Keep, uh, my recommendation is to have three sets of these rings, so I use a strength variant of the serrated Rex rings to get the most out of my fishing efficiency. It is a, a slight difference, but it, every little bit adds up. On to our specials tab, our goal is going to be getting the most AFK gain rate we can from here. So we're going to be using the snoozy cap to get 10% AFK gain rate. The idle skiller trophy is better than the blunder hill trophy, but if you don't have the idle skiller, then the blunder hill trophy does give 3% AFK gain rate. Idle skiller gives 15% skill efficiency, so it's my best in slot. 
The wings is gonna be the giant star flower for more AFK gain rate, 13% AFK gain rate. If you don't have these, the angel wings are also a good alternative and the free to play option would be the uh, gilded of font wings for more skill efficiency. For your key change, you want to use AFK gain rate, two of these with the most AFK gain rate that you can find, and your best one should be in the top slot because of the chips in the laboratory. Moving on to the tools, our best in slot is going to be using the best Rudlow rod we can, uh, or the best rod that we can. This gives us the most speed, most fishing power, and we can upgrade it to high amounts of strength. Keep in mind that the multiplier on this is about nine times the stats that are actually shown. So for 65 strength, it's almost 600 more um, strength that I'm getting from just the Dreadlow rod. So with that being said, all of our tools should have a strength variant. So the best pickaxe that you can get, the hatchet needs to have the most upgrades that you can to get more upgrade stones into it for more strength and all of your other tools about the same. Moving on to the food tab, we have four pieces of food that are highly necessary. The first is going to be the golden grilled cheese nomwich that gives you more percent to all stats. So the higher, the more food that you have, the better effect that you're going to get to your strength, which gives you more efficiency. The next one is the golden ribs. This is a direct multiplier to your fishing efficiency. So anything or any amount of golden ribs you have is going to help you out. The other two foods are our fishing speed foods, which is the slurp and herm, which gives us more fishing speed, as well as the aqua pearl for fishing speed. These are consumed relatively quickly, and that so I recommend using a small amount and making sure that you unequip them whenever you're done with your sampling, as the automation arm can really mess you up and use these foods very quickly if you're not paying attention to it. And they are basically impossible to replace unless another event comes around to give us more. There is one food that I don't have, and that's the candy canes. That is another fishing speed food. Um, my automation arm deleted all of mine for me so i no longer have access to those unfortunately next up is our talent so we're going to go through these relatively quick but each tab there's only a few talents that are actually necessary and everything else is kind of bonus the first tab the only talents that are necessary is brute efficiency for more total efficiency on all your skills fist of rage for more base strength which helps your efficiency and idle skilling to give you more afk gain rate in your specialized skills everything else is not necessary for your second tab you have a few more that are really helpful i do have this character set up for mining as well but we're just talking about fishing today so those are going to be absolute unit and firmly grasp it to give you one point of strength for every talent point the firmly grasp it does have 15 more strength for one point in it so make sure you always have at least one point and then otherwise max those two out next up a stress tested garb to multiply the strength that you get on your equipment and then if you have points left over the golden food from hungry for gold does help out with your golden ribs and uh, golden grilled cheeses on the third tab, we have a few more that are useful. This is starting with strength some more to give you max talent level and fist of rage. Uh, strongest statue gives you ocean man bonus to give you more uh, power from your fishing statues and fistful of oval gives you more strength from your ovals. It, all of these do add up. For your fishing specific talents, you want to pick up Bob and Bobbers first. This gives you more fishing power based on your minigame high score. So I have way too many points in this compared to my high score. So it's actually a wasted amount of talent points, um, but it is a lot of fishing power that you can gain this way. And the second one that's really necessary is catching some Zs, which gives you more AFK gain rate from fishing. The other one, such as worming undercover, isn't really helpful for the sampling, but if you're actively fishing, it can be useful. And then all fish diet is just fishing EXP. Moving on to the fourth tab, we have a couple talents that are really helpful, such as the overblown testosterone to give you more strength and more max talent levels in Fist of Rage. And then the most important is skill strengthen that gives your strength more impact on your skilling efficiency and also a small bonus to your strength. 
Your other talents that can be useful are things like Symbols of Beyond that gives you more talent levels in every talent that you have at least one point in. So I recommend having points there. And then Family Guy can be useful for your family bonuses. You can take a look here and see that I'm getting more strength from this character. Uh, weapon power isn't too useful and total damage isn't too useful. But back to our talents here, we do have the star talent tab left as well, and there's a few that are useful here. The Will of the Eldest gives you one to all stats for every 10 levels on your highest character, so 50 more stats if you're level 500. Um, and then moving on to TikTok for more AFK gain rates. Toilet paper postage stamp to multiply your skill efficiency from your stamps. It is worth mentioning that this starts getting very bad point for point after 1.5 times. So you don't need to invest as many points after 1.5 times, unless you just have a bunch of extra. On tab two, you have Frothy Mock, which increases your boost foods. So your potions and your golden foods are great. And then you also have Super Source for more base efficiency and Action Frenzy for more skill speed. On the third tab, the only thing that's really useful here is the stat overload to give you more strength. This is not a high priority. It gives you 300 flat strength, nothing multiplies to it. So it's a bonus, but it's not a high priority. Next up is our star signs, and we have three star signs that we really want to use, especially with fishing. Uh, fishing Pisces gives you more fishing efficiency and more multi-fish odds. And then you also have the Mount Eaterist, which gives you more food effect. On the Hydrant tab, you also have Comatose Major to give you 4% to skill AFK gain rate. So moving through the world, starting in World 1, we have a few statues that do help us out. And this is going to be your Ocean Man statue, which gives you more fishing power. And then also your Feasty statue, which increases your food effect. Both of these can really help out your overall fishing gains. Moving on to stamps, we have a few that help us out in the combat tab. It's going to be your Fist Stamp the Violent Stamp, and farther on down, the Maxo Slapo Stamp, which all give you more strength. And it is worth mentioning the Stat Graph Stamp as well to give you another small amount of all stats. In the Skills tab, we have a couple more for us, and this is going to start with the Fishing Rod Stamp for more base efficiency. Keep in mind that there is this under-leveled warning here. This still scales. So even as you level this up and it you're, you're not going up as much as one point per level or two points per level, whatever it is, but you're still scaling up slightly. So you do want to continue leveling this even if you notice the gains are a lot smaller because of this under-leveled notification. You also have the um, Holy Mackerel stamp to increase your multi-fish chance and everything else is optional except for the multi-tool stamp, which gives you more all skill efficiency. This is very expensive and it's a late game thing, but it does really increase your overall sampling on all of your characters. In the companions, you do have a few bonuses here that can help out your sampling rates, starting with Sandy Pot to give you more base to all stats, more strength helps your efficiency. Board Bean gives you 5% AFK gain rates to fighting and to skilling, which is what we're looking for. And Multi gives you 5% to all skill efficiency. The others are more quality of life, but they do help out. Sheepy equips all big bubbles all the time, so you don't need to make sure Sploosh Sploosh is equipped and things like that. Um, it does it for you, but it's a quality of life feature. Rift Slug is a direct upgrade. It's 25 levels to all talents, which can really add to your efficiency. So if you can, Rift Slug is worth it. And then King Dude is mostly a quality of life feature, but there are some benefits that do really help out your sampling. The main thing is, is that you can have Goat God active on all 10 characters as well as Snake God. So you do gain about three to 4% more AFK gain rate, depending on your divinity level. And then you can also get more printer sampling. However, it's not necessary to be able to get 99% of your maximum sampling. So you can still do very good samples without King Dude. Moving on to World 2 and starting with our alchemy bubbles, we have quite a few orange bubbles that really help us out. Starting with Roid Region, this gives us one point of strength for every level we have in this bubble. Now, there are multipliers, so it makes it more like five points of strength for every level you have in this bubble, so it's very worth leveling this up. 
Next up is Warrior, Warrior's Rule, which multiplies all orange bubbles as long as you're on a warrior based class. So you get 2.5 times more multiplier to all of these bubbles that we're talking about now. And then after that, it's really smart. This can really help you leveling up your fishing. This gives you more fishing EXP based on like if your mining level is higher, then you get more fishing EXP. If your fishing is higher, you get more mining EXP. Um, not really going to help your sampling, but it is worth mentioning because mining level does affect your fishing speed. After that, you have Spluce Spluce, which is your multi fish chance. This multiplier it goes up to 300%. It requires level 185 to get one to get 300% from the bubble alone. However, you have things like the star sign and the stamp that both give you multi fish chance. So you don't need to level it up quite that high, but it is pretty mandatory to have equipped unless you have the sheepy pet, in which case it's always equipped. After that, you have strong tools, which gives you more skilling power from your fishing rods. So this multiplies that bonus from the Dreadlow rod and gives you a lot more skilling power, which gives you a lot more fishing efficiency in turn. After that, we're moving on up to bubble 17, Molt Orange, which gives you a multiplier to your first, third, fifth, and eight bubbles. So this gives you a good multiplier to your fishing power and things like that. So you're going to get uh, a little bit more bonus from your strength and all of that for your fishing efficiency. You also have two more bubbles that are not as big, but worth mentioning. Slabby or fish gives you more fishing power per 100 items found in the slab. There are about 1400 items in the slab, so this equals out to about 28 mining and fishing power if you have everything kind of at the top end. So not a huge bonus to you because nothing multiplies this fishing power, but it does add up. And then lastly, on the orange bubbles is going to be slabby strength, which gives you 15 strength per 100 items found. Again, 1400 items, so about 14 times the 15 strength, a um, little under 200 strength. Not a bad bonus, but also not hugely necessary. For the yellow bubbles, we have a few more that also help us out. And the first one is your prowessary bubble. This gives you a, um, it reduces the amount of fishing efficiency that you need to get to the next tier of multi fish. So the one thing to mention here is this caps at two times. So all sources of prowessary only go up to two times. After that, you're no longer gaining any benefit, which means once you get to two times from the bubble, the post office box and the leak and the dinner menu, you no longer need to level these things up um, or not for that specific bonus. You also have the stamp tramp, which increases the max level of your toilet paper postage stamp. And we talked about this, that it starts being a bad uh, investment. Still a gain, but it's not going to be one of your priorities. You also have the samplets, the bubble, which gives you more sample size on your 3D printing. It can be worth it, but it can be expensive to level it up as well. Past that, the last thing that's worth mentioning here is the big P, big bubble. This bubble should be equipped on all 10 of your characters as the goat god does give significant bonuses. Um, so it's 30% more bonus to your goat god is why we're using it. And we'll talk about more of that once we get to world five. Moving on to your alchemy vials, we have three vials that we're really looking for here. First is the Etrusian Lager, which gives you more fishing efficiency. So level this up as high as you can. It is worth mentioning that with the Rift bonuses in now, every vial is worth something, and we'll talk about it a little bit more later, but the more vials you have maxed out, the more fishing efficiency you're going to get from this. Next up is the Snow Slurry, which gives you more printer sample size. And again, this multiplies out, so it's another way to max out that 90%. The last one is going to be the Pearl Seltzer, which gives you 3.5% to all stats at level two. Fairly easy to get level two, but if you can get it higher, that's more stats for you, which means more efficiency. However, it is very expensive. And lastly, in the pay to win tab, we do have a few bonuses to mention here. Uh, the first one is going to be the emoji veggie. This gives you 25% to all golden food effects. There is some multipliers on this later that we'll talk about. So it is worth maxing this out. You also have big muscle for 20 strength and you also have the dream catcher for 3% uh, skill AFK gain rates when it's the golden level. So if you can level that up, it becomes very worth it. And we'll talk about that in world five. 
onto the post office and there are a few boxes here that can help us out. The first is going to be the fish box, which gives us more efficiency, prowess effect, and fishing AFK gain rate. From here, we want to put points into the food box to give us more boost food effect. And then we're looking more into the second tab, which gives us the utility box for more printer sample rate. And then also the gaming box for more strength. And lastly, if you have the points left over, you can put into the Myriad crate for more base efficiency and more base all stats. However, it does require 100,000 boxes, so this is not a early game priority. And wrapping up world two with our obols. This is a few choices to make here. My choice is using the fishing obols. This gives you fishing power for every circle. The square obols give you three fishing power. The platinum obols give you fishing efficiency. One thing to mention here is the dilapidated slush obols do give you 4% to all skill efficiency. So it's better if you can get them to drop. However, I haven't been that lucky so far. Uh, next up is the the sparkle obols and these are the new sparkle oval from the molten oval of the dead divine world five boss and it gives you five percent to all afk gain rates if you don't have these or if you test it out it may be better to use the eight percent fishing efficiency obols however i think the 20 percent uh, or five percent per oval um, afk gain rates is slightly better Moving on to the family tab, this is basically the same thing. I don't put the circle ovals in as I just don't have enough slots for all of my ovals that I want to keep. Um, but I use the same things for the squares, hexes and sparkles. These are the dilapidated slush ones that give me the 4% all skill efficiency versus the 2%. Um, so that is best in slot. And again, choice between the 8% or the 5% AFK gains. To wrap it up for the totals, you can see that I'm getting a little over 100 strength, 6% fishing, 12% all skill efficiency, and 20% AFK gain rate by using the oval setups that I have. Moving on to world three, we have two bonuses that we really want to talk about. The first is in prayers, and there's three prayers that are really necessary and two that we want to avoid. The first is going to be the Royal Sampler, which gives us more printer sample size. However, don't over level this as it does nuke your EXP gain. After that, you have the Zerg Rush again, which gives you 15% more AFK gain rates and then skilled Dimwit to increase your skilling efficiency by a lot. The two we want to avoid is first balance of proficiency as this reduces your skill efficiency and then rucksack which reduces your AFK gain rates. Moving on to world four and in the lab there are four things we need from the lab mainframe. The first is going to be Sapphire Novette which gives us 4.5% to all stats which gives us more strength. Second up is the certified stamp book, which doubles all of our stamps. And third is going to be my first chemistry set, which doubles all of our alchemy vials. And lastly is going to be the black diamond rhinestone, which gives us 24% bonus to all of our meals. And we're going to be talking about the dinner menu in a minute. So we'll check all of that out. After that is going to be the console. The console gives us more bonuses in the form of doubling. And the ones we want to use are first the card doublers that gives us a double in the top left and bottom right slots. The skilling AFK gain rate chip, which gives us 15% more AFK gains. And then the four orange chips, which doubles the star signs, the trophy, the upper keychain slot, so it's important to make sure your best one's on the upper slot, and then also the pendant. So if we're using the best in slot, uh, the Divine Scarf, that gives us 25% more AFK gain rates for using this chip. Moving on to the dinner menu, we have four meals that are worth looking at here for us. The first is going to be corn, which gives us 2% skill efficiency per dinner plate level. And then further on down, we have the rice ball, which gives us 3% skill efficiency per level. So that's also another big gain. The leak gives us more skilling prowess. Again, this caps at two times. So if you have this leveled up in alchemy or in the dinner menu, it's really not going to be hugely useful to you past a certain point. And the last dinner menu item is the whipped cocoa, which gives us 4% skill efficiency per dinner plate level. Also in World 4 is the Shiny Pet Passives, and there are uh, several of these that have multiple pets that give the same bonus. 
but they all need to be leveled up to get the bonuses. The first is going to be the bonuses to all meals, a couple pets that give that. Next up is base efficiency from all skills. This is base, so it gets multiplied by everything. So it's actually a lot more than just 100 per pet. And again, more levels is more points. And the third one is going to be anything that gives you base strength. It's a small amount, but hey, everything helps. And moving on to the Rift, which is in World 4, we're going to talk about a few bonuses here that all add up. One of them's pretty big, the other are not so big, but they still really help. The first is going to be the Skill Mastery. Skill Mastery is a kind of a count up on all of your character's total levels for each particular skill. So every skill has bonuses that it offers. This is fishing in particular. So at 500 total level from all 10 of our characters, we're getting 5% skill efficiency. We're also getting 10% fishing efficiency from it. And we're also making all of our fishing cards are passive, which means we don't need to equip those particular cards to be able to benefit from them. So we can equip other cards to get benefits from more cards, basically. Now, Every skill has its own bonuses. So every skill that you can level this up on, you're getting 5% skill efficiency and 1% printer output at level 750. So this means 75% more skill efficiency and 15% more printer output, which is gonna help your gains in the end of all of your sampling. So the more skills you can level up, the better off you're going to be. The other bonuses in the Rift aren't as big, but they do add up. The first is going to be Vial Mastery, which gives you 2% to all vials for, for every vial that's at max level. So at 38 vials, I'm getting 76% more bonus from all of my vials. The next up is going to be the Ruby cards. This is another grind to do, but it can really help your overall gains. One is it can increase your fishing cards, and we also make those cards passive, so it's just straight gains for for you and you can also increase your card sets to the ruby level which means we get another eight percent from that easy resource card set the other one that's worth mentioning is the infinite star signs this makes all of your star signs active at all times and it takes away the negative effects the one thing to mention here is that if you're doubling your star signs, it only doubles the star signs that are actually active. So you still need to select the proper star signs to make this work for the, the star signs that you want it to be on. And moving on to World 5, we have the Relics in from Sailing, which do give us quite a few good benefits and some that are smaller. Uh, the first is going to be the Frost Relic, which gives us 30% efficiency per tier. So at the Eldritch form, it gives us 90% efficiency to all skills in World 1, 2, and 3. So for our fishing, 90% efficiency is pretty good. After that, we have Chilled Yarn, which gives us a, a bonus to our sigils. So those sigils that we talked about get a six times bonus to all of our sigils, and that makes it a lot more useful for those golden foods and those skill AFK gain rates. After that, the ones that are a little less are going to be the Fury Relic, which gives you more talent book levels. Um, this isn't a direct increase, but it definitely gives you more stats, which gives you more fishing efficiency. After that, Socrates gives you 10% stats per tier, so 30% more all stats, 30% more strength, really helps us out. The last one that's really worth mentioning is the Gold Relic. This isn't a sampling thing in particular, but it does give us a bonus to our printer output. So for every day that you don't sample, you're getting a 2 or 3% bonus to um, all of your samples, which means you're gaining potentially 3 to 4 times more um, samples from your printer, or three to, 3 to 4 times more printing from your 3D printer. And the last bonuses in World 5 do come from your Divinity Statues. This is where things get a little tricky and you need to time your sampling properly to be able to get the most AFK gains on each of your characters. To do this, on the character that you're sampling on, you want to make sure that the Snake God is active. This gives you 30% more AFK gain rates. 
You can choose one to two characters to do this on, and then all of your other eight to nine characters should be linked to the Goat God, as their minor link bonus gives you this 3.6, so it's somewhere between three and 4% AFK gain rates, depending on your divinity level. So the higher your divinity level, the more this minor link bonus is going to be. And also the big P bubble in alchemy gives you that 30% bonus to this as well. So you're gaining a lot more AFK gain rates by using this setup. So you're getting 30% from here. And then, you know, nine characters with 3.6 would give you an additional 33-ish percent um, AFK gains for like 60 something percent AFK gain rate. Now, this should look something like this with one character on the snake god and nine characters on the goat god. Again, if you're doing your logs or your, your ores, you may have like two characters on snake and the other eight. You're giving up 3%, but you're gaining two characters for that week of sampling. So it's your choice on how you want to do it. I personally do like my logs one week and then my ores the next week. Or if you have Doot, this is where the quality of life feature comes in. King Doot allows you to do all of your sampling at the same time on all characters with no penalty because everybody gets the bonuses. The other big thing to mention in the Divinity God setup is using Harip. Harip gives you three times more printing from your 3D printer, and this does apply to the lab bonus as well. So the lab, if the character is in the lab, gives you two times. So that gives you a total of six times more printing if you have Harip equipped and then toss that character in the lab and uh, kind of forget about them but six times more printing on something like a billion logs can add up significantly for your atom collider. And the last piece of the puzzle is equipping the proper cards for this setup. And this means, this depends on if you have the skill mastery from the Rift unlocked or not. If your cards are passive, you can use something like this, which is Chaotic Troll to give you the 60% skill efficiency, 24% boost from the boost foods, and uh, percent to all stats from Blighted Cheezor, Tremor Worm, and Still Seeker, AFK gain rates from Bunny and Amrak, and 60 strength from the Octodar. If you don't have the uh, Rift unlocked, then you can use something more like this, which is the Chaotic, or the chaotic Troll, uh, Kraken, Sand Shark, Bloaches, Hermit Cans, Bunny, Amrock, and then the Skellifish. The most important thing for either of these setups is using these cards in the top right and uh, top left and bottom right cards in the proper slots so that the card doublers will give you the most bang for your buck. The other thing to mention in your cards is going to be your card sets, and this is going to be using your easy resources. Now, if your fishing efficiency is too low, you could try out the Yum Yum Desert for food effect, or you can use the hard resources for skill AFK gain. However, once you get to high enough efficiency, then easy resources is gonna blow everything else out of the water. So we've got most of our pieces of the puzzle set in place now. We've got the most fishing efficiency, all of our speed, so the last thing is talking about getting the right depth, using the right lines and lures, and selecting the right fishing spot for which fish we want to get. So for the first one, which is our goldfish, we're going to be using the crash box lure, as well as the it's a boy line. This is gonna give us a 60% chance to our green fishing, and then we want to make sure we're on the right fishing spot. To check this, you can check in here, you can pop it in, you'll see that it's got 60%. But if we go to this other line and click on it and check back, you'll see that we drop down to 46% chance here. So we want the right spot and then we can sample here. And then it may take a few attempts to get goldfish. We did get it on our first one, but we'll go for one more just to show. And so we got goldfish again. The sampling will always take your best samples, so don't worry about it overriding whenever you go to the next fishing spot. For the second one, which is our hermit cans, we're going to be looking for a different lure, which is gonna be wormy. This is going to give us our best yellow chance, and we can click our fishing line here and see that our yellow chance went up to 42%, which is going to give us a lot more hermit cans on this. So we can go ahead and fish and click our sample until we get hermit cans. Again, it may take you a few attempts, but we'll get there. So 15.7 million hermit cans, and we can move on to the third fish. 
For this one, we're going to move to the next zone and our goal here is going to be switching out our lure and line. We're going to be using the feather for the first one and then our line is going to be the platinum line. If you don't have the platinum line, you can use the silver twine and this will give you a good red depth. However, we get better red depth and more fishing speed this way. So we're going to notice a better jellyfish gain using this setup. So for this one, we're going to be using the far right fishing spot. And again, just sampling until we get goldfish or until we get jellyfish now. There's our jellyfish at a little under 8.5 million. And for our last setup, we're going to be using the same line, the platinum twine, but we're gonna be switching over to the elephant. The other option here is using the valve circles. This does give you a little bit less depth, but it does give you fishing speed. I still notice the elephant is a little bit better. Same thing here, you can use the platinum twine or you can switch to the gold twine for the purple depth, but the platinum twine is better. For the far left fishing spot, when we're going for bloaches, this is when we want to switch out and go to our fish head pendant. So we can take a look and test everything here um, with our, our line. We can dip our line in the water real quick and test our lure. We're at 9.8%, but if we throw on the fish head pendant, we're jumping up to 11%, and that percentage is going to give us a lot more than the extra AFK gain rate that we get from the Persephone's pendant. This may not be the case anymore with the Divine Scarf. I haven't been able to test it yet, so you may need to check that out and just resample between the two to see which is better. But we got everything set up, so now we're just looking for our bloaches sample. So we're at a little under four million bloaches with this setup, and we can move on to our last four fishing samples. So again, we're gonna be using the same setup, but we're gonna be using particular spots. Since we're already set up for purple depth, we're gonna start with Krakens and go backwards here. And for this one, we want to use the left fishing zone and then sample for Krakens. Everything is set up. We're using the same literal elephant and platinum twine, and we got a good Kraken sample. I'll try it, 446,000. And then we're going to switch over and go backwards here. So we're going to use the feather. And then for the manta rays, we're going to use the right spot. A little confusing, but for whatever reason, it's the way it is. So we're looking for manta rays, 889,000. And now we can switch to wormy. And then we're going to use the it's a boy line again for the, this one. For these last two fish, it's going to be in the middle zone. So we're looking for sand sharks here with this same setup as the hermit cans where's our sand sharks there we go 1.2 million and then our last one is our skelly fish so we're going to switch back to our crash box and hit this one for our last one on skelly fish So we've got all of our samples done and we can take a look in our quick reference for our printer 16 million goldfish up to 22 million decent gain for today it's not as good as my chopping and mining gains but that's just the nature of fishing and catching remember to like subscribe and drop a comment if you're enjoying our videos and a huge shout out to our patrons your support means the world to us if you would like to become a patron check out the link in the description for more details and be sure to visit our merch store so you can get some pretty cool stuff if you have any thoughts or questions, let me know in the comments below, and we'll see you next time.